the electric car of the moment is a car which most of us can't actually buy yet, slightly frustratingly. And it's a car that's made over here in America. So what we've done is we've decided to come over here and experience what Elon Musk regards almost as the Model T Ford of the electric car world, the highly anticipated Model 3. So what we've done is we found a couple of friends of Fully Charged who actually own them and have got them. And we're gonna have a chat with them. Hello. First of all, I just want to say thank you to you guys for stepping up at such short notice because we put the word out through Fully Charged that we were coming to uh, South Colorado um, so that we could actually do the Pikes Peak event. And we thought we'll try and see if we can meet some Model 3 owners. And four of you turned up within a matter of six days notice. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. What's your name? I'm Ed. What's your name? Meg McCauley. And what's your name? I'm Scott Matson. Now, you guys, uh, you just said you, this, is, this is brand new. You've only just got Two it. weeks today. Two weeks ago. And is this your first EV? Yes, it is. It is. You've gone straight in at the Model 3. Been a Subaru guy for 18 different models. Wow. This was supposed to be my wife's car. She's got an STI. Okay. And she fell in love with that, so I got this one. So you ordered it for your wife and she wants to keep the Subaru. 798 days from the day I put my deposit in till I picked it up. Really? Yeah. So you had it a fortnight. And what do you think about it so far? My wife's jealous. Is she? Oh, I love it. It is an amazing car. It's quiet. Yep. It handles. Yep. It's faster than my wife's car, which he, she gets oh, upset Subaru about. Subaru guys, they like their performance, yeah. don't they? So that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. Okay. But and it's great. So apart from waiting a very long time, it's been... It's been amazing. I've had nothing wrong with it. I've put 800 miles on it. Yeah. And it charges well, it's fast. I put a home plug in. Yeah. Um, I'm planning a 4,000 mile road trip in a month. 4,000? Yes, we're gonna go east, the north, around Canada, and back down. Wow. Just for kicks and grins. And, the, and that's, quite, that's quite a bold thing to do for your like first electric car experience. Why not? You must document it. We will. Tell us We're going to take it. pictures. It'll be on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. And put it in the Denver Tesla Club page. Yeah. And just have fun with it. Wow. Now, is this your first electric car? No, no. I had a 2013 uh, Model S. Yeah. And I traded it in on this car. Okay. My wife has a Model X. Okay, so you're a two Tesla family. Yeah, well, this is the third one. Th sort of a three Tesla. Yes. And okay, so how does it compare going from a Model S? We've, we have actually got a Model S here for just for size reference, really, and for, for because people like us, British people and European people, we very rarely get to see one of these part next to one of these. So it's great. And we've also got a Nissan Leaf because that's the best selling electric car in, in the UK, certainly. So it's, and it's good, again, to compare the size because this is a much, much smaller car than that it is isn't it yes so for it's you, more maneuverable it just feels lighter and and friskier yeah and it only costs this one only costs half what our model s cost so genuinely half price yes and did you go for the which spec did you go for the one with a slightly higher range or the, you only get one when you order real early you, okay you get you get uh, your choice of body color wheels and that's it black seats yeah. is standard this glass roof is yeah, standard i like the glass roof yeah yeah it's um it's a good car yeah uh i love the model s and i love the model x even better this is a good good transportation car as a second car for us so would you um do you miss anything about the model s having gone from that to this not not really no no. No. Uh -uh. So that's pretty good. It's half the price of yes. the Model S and you don't yes. miss anything. Yes, that's important. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. It's a wonderful electric vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have to say, for, for, for us, Brits and Europeans, the size is more suited. Oh, clearly. To Europe. Yes, a very quiet Tesla that's just gone past. Yeah. I've heard it. Clearly. On... We, yeah. can, uh, we cannot put so much... Um, things if you're going to move big stuff yeah. you can't get it in here yeah but we could put all kinds of things by sitting down the seats in the model s yeah. and and you can put in many many boxes and this has got like a 60 40 split yes uh back seat has yes. it if you want even more yeah same as model s yeah. yeah yeah is this your first ev it is is it it is so you've gone in quite hard as well and, and ordered the, the new big thing. I did, yep. Two years, one month, and 25 days. 
That's how long I waited. You've waited for over two years? For the car, yeah. That is full dedication. It was a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and what, okay, so, and how long have you had it? How long? How long? Uh, tomorrow will be four weeks. Four weeks, so it's still really fresh. Yeah. And how, how do you find it li living with it so far? It's been great. Yeah? It's been great. I had a hybrid before, so the, the storage space in this is actually quite a bit better. Okay. Just because of the battery placement being down low. Yeah. So. And what hybrid did you have? I was a kind of a unique car. It was a Nissan Altima hybrid. Yeah. It actually licensed the technology from Toyota for the car. So, yeah. Uh, kind of a, it was a fun car, but this is a lot more fun. And did that whet your appetite to get a full electric, do you think? Yeah, and I think living up here at, at about a mile above sea level, conventional internal combustion engines will lose a decent amount of power just yeah. with the lower oxygen levels in the air. So going to something that's all electric. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference. The hybrid with the electric motor had a little bit of an advantage, but this is this is like nothing else. So so charging wise, presumably you've all got home chargers. Oh, yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Superchargers before that, 22 cents a kilowatt hour. Okay. And there's, uh, what's the supercharger network in Colorado like? Is it okay? Or? It's just fine. There's one right downtown here. Yeah. And uh, the next ones are south to Trinidad, Colorado, north to Denver. Okay. And Denver Presumably has Denver's three. got loads. Which are yeah. e and they're e adding easily. three more. Easily. Okay. 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 So what's the maximum miles that Tesla claim on this? Is it 310 for the top? The That's top what miles? we hear. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you tested it? I have not. I, I haven't. Idea. Do any of you have like a power wall at home, a Tesla power wall? Have you gone down that road of... It's on order. Is it? Yes. You've gone from like not having an EV to having a Model 3, ordering a power wall. You've got your home charger. We have, we have solar in our house. Solar. We, we bought a house, had solar put in. Right. Um, You're like a poster child of all of this. Rarely pay anything for electric. Wow. And we're going to go totally off the grid. Well, it'd be cool to, to go out for a drive in one. We could all go out in a little convoy maybe. Would that be cool? Let's yeah. do it. Lead the way. Yeah. And you got to master the door handle too. Yeah. That reminds me of a, I'm trying to think what car first had that. Fiat Barchetta. Aston Martin had a thing like this, didn't they? First of all, I get in and it is so sparse, isn't it? It's so simple. Yeah, it's really, it's minimalist to an extreme. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about this. It's all about, all about the screen. You've just got that bar of dash, the wood on the dash here, and then you've got your leathers. It is leather, isn't it? Is it? It's a vegan leather. So is some it? sort of synthetic material. Okay. This is leather, the steering wheel That's is. That's leather, That's right. That's the only, only leather in the car. Yeah, you can actually feel the difference. Yeah. So this is like a sort of 21st century uh, vinyl of some sort. Well, yeah. <laughs> Custom vinyl uh, to Elon's own recipe. As it stands, we've got, I think Tesla have half a million orders for these. A ton of cars, isn't it? Yeah, and I think they're just getting up to about 5,000 per week, because that'll put them at right about 250,000 a year, which... Is a lot. It's a lot, but... This is his Model T lot. though, isn't it? This yeah, is, his, it is. The, you know, this is the EV for the people that does big mileage, enough range for people not to complain about range anxiety. Exactly, exactly. 310 miles, if, if it really does do that, um, is huge. It's huge. enough that you just don't, it does, it's not something that really occupies your mind. It's not a thing, yeah. is it? It's not really you a thing. Think about if it. you've got a home charger, 310 miles, and of course you've got your access to the superchargers, the network of those. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you supercharge uh, a lot? So in the past, Four weeks that I've had the car, I've supercharged I think only twice. Okay. So mostly home stuff. Though. Mostly home. Yeah. And I actually only have a 110 volt connection at home right now that I'm charging on. Oh wow! So charging. it takes about 80 days to fully charge <laughs> this car. It'll put about five miles of range per hour on the car. Oh which wow! Which can be painful, but yeah. for the driving I do with a battery this large, yeah. On the weekend, obviously, it charges more if I'm at home. Yeah. Than the typical overnight charge, and it's for the most part been enough to, to get me by, but I'm, I'm gonna put in a, uh, a 220 charger. Yeah. What made you buy one of these? What made you attracted to it in the first place? Yeah, about four or five years ago, I had a friend who had a Model S. Mm -hmm. 
And I had never even heard of Tesla before, and I sat in that thing and was just blown away, mainly by the screen, but just yeah. the car in general. And then we went for a ride in it, and just yeah. the instant torque was amazing. It's, it's addictive. And were you, you know? were you a car guy before this? Were yes. You, were, you were always into cars? Yes. Okay. So, oddly enough, my reason for getting a Tesla is not as much the environmental aspect. That's a nice benefit of it, yeah. but it's the performance, and that's, especially up here at altitude. That's really interesting to me because... I've noticed that with with Teslas, Tesla, the, the 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 strength of the Tesla brand has got people into into cars who maybe aren't even car enthusiasts. The technology right. enthusiasts. Right, so you've got, um, I'm just having a quick look at the screen here and there. Mm -hmm. Got my speed in the top left hand corner. And to be honest, uh, I've, I've not looked at it that much so far. So as you say, it took you about a day to get accustomed to it. Yeah. So the, uh, you've got, um, it has autopilot function, mm -hmm. that which was an option, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, and then you, I know you can adjust the steering feel, the weight of the steering at three different weights. Mm -hmm. Do you ever play with that much? I did at the beginning. Yeah. Um, light was oh, pretty adjust. light. Yes, yeah, so this will adjust the height. And I saw that with that little knob there. That, that, yeah. that goes in and out. Like in and that. out. Yeah. And you can scroll up and down. You do that. And then if you go uh, over to driving, you can see that right now oh, it's in standard, standard, which is where, I, where I've had it for the most part. And I actually, yeah. you know, you know, Tesla purists will not like the fact that I have regen set to low and creep turned on, but it's most similar I to like a conventional. Creep. I know, I do too. It's most similar like to a conventional car. So. Yeah, um, but you can you know if you put it in sport, you'll feel it get a little heavier. And it's it's weighted up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't affect the steering ratio or anything. It's just the the weight. You know the quality of the the stereo system. Are you pleased with it? I that was one thing I was pretty concerned about. Yeah. Going into the car is I love to sit and experience a car before I buy it, and this was a completely different experience than that. You put down your, your thousand dollar deposit and hope you'll see a car one day <laughs> and i you know it's, it's very trusting yeah it, it is unfortunately the deposit was fully refundable if i changed my mind but that is good um yeah i've always really enjoyed having a nice stereo in a car and this car it does not disappoint it was it's i that's probably one of my favorite features in this car is the sound is system it? yeah so it's and what, is it an art is it a, an aftermarket company it's un, it? unbranded okay so, so you don't really know where it came from no you don't know if it's Bose or Harman Kardon, you don't know. But oh, wow. It sounds good. So Yeah. I think I, I went around and tallied up. I think there are 14 speakers in here. So. Really? But like this, although this doesn't have ludicrous mode and it doesn't have a four-wheel drive capability yet, you, it's still a fast car. It is. Five, five seconds to 60 car, or, or just under, is, is fast. With a with a range like it has of, of over three hundred miles, yeah, you know that's respect that's respectable. That's still a that's still sports car performance. It's just that we've got used to the Model S being able to do it in sub three, which is <laughs> lunacy. Yeah. So if you want, you can turn on autopilot. I can turn on autopilot. Now. Double tap down. On on. Yep. Oh, the right one. So, so now. Okay. So I'm going past thing. a guy on a motorbike with no helmet. Yeah. So if you take your foot off the gas, it yeah. will automatically. Yeah. It, it wants to kind of swing wide. Okay. There's another gripe I have. When you approach a turn lane and it kind of appears like it could be a wider lane. Yeah. It will want to center itself in whatever lane it has. So it kind of okay. floats around. But. And it gives you this this in illustration of what it's seeing with its. Radar right. eyes. Right, you can see other cars in other lanes now. Okay. The, the car in front of the car in front of you. So do you think it's doing that? Oh, it thinks and, a motorbike's a car. And motorcycle's cutting you off. It, it sees all that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, do you use autopilot a lot? I do a fair amount. Yeah. Uh, primarily on the freeway, but even on some, some surface streets, okay. you can get away with it. it. It doesn't recognize stop signs or, or stop lights at this point. So, okay. Um, so you have, to be, you have to be, yeah, you have to pay attention. But <laughs> Um, it doesn't recognize stoplights. Yeah. Uh, we're on fairly broken roads here, aren't mm -hmm. we? You'd say there's a lot of, lot of cuts and divots yeah. and stuff. I think it's pretty quiet. It's yeah. It's a road noise. And they actually, and I forget when they made the changes, but in some of the earlier VINs, uh, I forget if it was the roof glass or the windshield, what, what they changed, but they 
used a slightly different part, and I don't know if it's uh, you know laminated now and it wasn't before, or, or what the, what's so the difference the, to help improve road uh, noise. Okay. And they also redid the seats a little bit, so these are a little more a little more bolstered Supportive, and comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Tell it me went, about it, something else. So you've got the you've got the car thing here. You've obviously got the seats and the air conditioning down here. You've got the heated front and rear screens. Mm -hmm. So you can even do the rear seats from the screen. Okay. Wow. So it's just. Oh, that's nice. Slick. Three stage on all of them. Yep. Even, even the middle. The middle so. Even the middle. Yeah. Bloody hell! You know that's Mercedes S class kind of levels of bling. And it's you know it's sophisticated enough that it knows you know for presumably for primarily safety features that. Yep. Uh, it has weight sensors in each seat, so it knows if someone's sitting there and a seatbelt's not buckled yeah. to give you a warning. But it also knows that no one's back there, so it doesn't have the rear air conditioning on. Okay, so it knows but as soon no as someone weight sits, on. it turns it on. It activates. This is this in right-hand drive will be really quite something. Yeah, I'm really impressed. I have to say, I'm really impressed. They've thought of quite a quite a lot, but they've made other car manufacturers step up. They have. That's the other thing to bear in mind, which I do really like. Yeah, Chevrolet would not have produced the, the Bolt. No, they wouldn't. If. And the Bolt's apparently really good. It is, and I, I honestly, I went to go test drive one and uh, told the, uh, the salesperson at the dealership that you know, I was on the waiting list for one of these and I wanted to see what, you know, what the Bolt was like. Yeah. Two or three different dealers both told me, or you know, however, however many, they told me, oh man, Model 3 is a great car, you should just wait and get one of those. You're joking. So I don't know if that was just a uh, salesman that wasn't really eager to disgruntled, yeah, self. or or what. But uh, he, 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 a General Motors salesman, said you should just hold out yeah, for just, the Model uh, Three. Yeah, it, That's just weird. Yeah. So. Do you feel like you're in this kind of pioneering community, being a being a Model Three owner? A little bit. Yeah. T Tesla owners are a weird breed. Yeah. And I'm I'm right there with them. So it's you know. <laughs> you can it's say an interesting that. group. Oh yeah, it's an interesting group. So, but no, it's it's a lot of fun. I like, I like it though. I like the fact that, well, really, look, look at the faith that you guys have had in, 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 in the company. Yeah. You've wanted to buy something you haven't been able to even sit in before you purchased it. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's the more I think about it from a logic standpoint, it's like, what was I doing? What were you thinking? Putting, you were putting down a thousand dollars on a car that I hadn't seen. Yeah. You were. And then you, ordering a car I hadn't driven. Yeah. Because at that point it became non-refundable. Yeah, because it could have arrived and you could have gone, I just don't like it. Yeah. Or I'm, I'm too tall for it. Or yeah. ma many other reasons. Yeah, I, I had my, my Model 3 before a local Tesla store had theirs to sit in. Did you? So. Well done you. <laughs> really, really enjoyed that. Really impressed with that. I have to say, pleasantly surprised. It's just a really good car. Much more simple than the Model S, but actually no less attractive, no less useful. In a way, I kind of... I do prefer it. Just feels a little bit more solid, a bit more familiar, like a BMW 3 Series, and that's that's the size. BMW 3 Series, much more European friendly in its dimensions. There's your comparison. That's something we're all familiar with. 2018 Leaf, and there's your Model 3. You know, there's not a great deal in it. And it feels like it could be a really fun driver's car. Of course, no ludicrous mode, right, rear wheel drive only but still 0 to 62 in like five seconds, 310 mile range for the, for the early cars like this. I mean, it's like phenomenal package for the money. Do you not think? Half the price on Model S right now. Apparently, the reason why the Model 3 is not a hatchback is because of this lovely glass sunroof setup, which is gorgeous. It's like a split glass sunroof and it does make a nice difference to the interior of the cabin. But the boot is actually more impressive than I thought, although, it's quite deep anyway. It's obviously fairly inboard and it's quite shallow like a saloon, but it does go back. And then you've got 60-40 split seat, like so. And that allows you to have this huge space. So although the parcel shelf is fixed, one of the other owners I've just spoken to today gets his two bicycles in without having to dismantle them. Another one actually sleeps in it sometimes, which is slightly weird, but it's possible. So this is over six foot two of space. So there you go, it might be a saloon, but it's a bloody practical one. Tesla's unfortunately become a bit of a victim of its own success, but I really hope they can bring it back together and keep everybody happy. These are just three guys who have actually got their cars and they're more than happy. 
more than happy. Great, don't you think?